The first goal for me when I created this channel was to convert at least one Windows or Mac user to start using Linux. After getting drunk the first night I got home, I decided to make my father my first potential victim. He has been using Linux every day for the past two weeks, and this is what happened. I'm a firm believer that everything exists for a reason, so I don't think that one distribution is better than the other. I think certain distro is just better suited for people with specific use cases. I think people with different technological, educational, and environmental background should pick different distribution. Although my father has been working all his life in the tech-related industry, he has never laid an eye or a finger on Linux ever in his life. Only Windows, because of the crazy popularity of the pirating Windows in China since 95, and the lack of proper channel to buy the legit copy from Microsoft until Windows 10 came along. He is using two 10-year-old laptops at the moment. One is for watching TV shows on the television by connecting it through an HDMI cable and the other is for browsing the internet. For this video, I only converted the one he used for watching TV shows because I want him to have an easy entry going in Linux world, and this one has the simplest use case. I plan to make him use an Arch-based Linux for the second laptop, which I think will be more fun and challenging for both of us in the future. But now, let's first understand what he needs for this laptop. The laptop is placed underneath the television with its screen facing down. The only external input device so far is a wireless mouse for basic navigation. He usually finishes one TV series around one and a half weeks. So mostly, after opening up the browser, he will go to the history page, which is now the browser's starting page, click on the latest episode he was on and then continues there. He needs to use the keyboard to search the next TV show's title after he finished the previous one. Usually he knows what he needs to search for because he has a list of unwatched TV shows in his wish list somewhere else. Also, he needs to input Chinese character for the TV show's name. With the use cases and background out of the way, I started the distribution pickup process. I've mentioned in several of my videos that Linux Mint is my favorite Debian-based distribution and it has a Windows-like default look. I decided to make it my first candidate for introduce my father to Linux. The second reason is that this is a distribution mainly focused on stability. It is so focused on stability that this is the third time I mentioned in my video that it is still using a kernel from 2019 at the end of 2021. I think it is a perfect distribution to use on the older laptop for my father. And the final reason I chose it is because it is easy enough to maintain. So if there is any issue, I have enough confidence to jump in and fix it for him. Now let's see what happened. The installation process was easy enough. Two things I want to mention here. First is that surprisingly, I found the UEFI boot option in the old BIOS and take it on before doing anything else. And the second one is that I made sure to enable the option to install the multimedia codecs during the installation as this is purely for watching video online. I was kind of wondering if Chromium will work out of the box with these codecs. After the installation, I did several things for the localization. I switched all the software mirror location to China installed the Chinese display language for the whole system, and installed FCITX and FCITX Rhyme for Chinese input. There was not a single issue during this process, except I was not sure if I could set the input switching method to left shift only, which is required by my father, because he got used to it by using Microsoft Chinese pinyin input, and I found it was super easy to do in the FCITX configuration. Finally, I installed the Chromium using apt package manager and handed over the laptop back to my father. Oh, and one more thing. Thank goodness that this laptop doesn't have any NVIDIA GPU. It has a dedicated AMD GPU and an Intel i5 CPU. So I didn't have to worry about any driver at all. After setting up the distribution, he started his journey with Linux. I was sitting beside him nervously watching and ready to provide any help when needed. 
first one came after the first login. The external screen is always the secondary screen. So I turned on the mirror display for him to make sure the output is consistent. This created another issue, which is that the TV screen resolution is 1360 by 768, but the laptop screen is 1366 by 768. Mirroring the display caused the edge cut out instantly on TV. This is not a Linux specific issue. This is a conflict introduced when using different resolution of 720p. And my father has encountered with this before in Windows. So he got it fixed instantly by first turning off the mirror display function and change the resolution on TV to the correct number. I was also helping him turning off the laptop screen to make sure the TV is the only source of display output. The next thing is related to the login and password. He is used to not having to enter password when using Windows before. He could just turn on the machine and start watching TV. So I helped him disable the login password by adding his username to the user section in the login window setting. But the issue came after that is that he had to enter password whenever he wants to use the web browser after each boot up because of the key ring. I explained that this is out of the security concern and I don't recommend to disable it altogether. So he agreed to settle for entering password every time he log in. Now, I have ported all his bookmarks from Windows and imported them to Chromium browser. So I just sat there and watched him setting up all the websites he frequently used for watching TV shows. And I was happy to see that all the media codecs Linux Mint installed by default work out of the box with Chromium to watch all his shows on websites without any hiccups. Another minor issue happened during the time he uses the system. He found that intern password every time the system log out after a long time idling was pretty tedious, especially when the keyboard is not visually accessible. So I suggested to install a plugin for him like Caffeine, but he insisted to solve it himself. He was able to find a power management in the settings and make the change pretty quickly. And I was extremely satisfied with both his willingness to solve the problem in Linux and Cinnamon's intuitive settings manual. Now, my father is still happily using Linux Mint. I'm planning to get him a wireless keyboard so he doesn't have to input the password and the show's name blindly underneath the table. Also, he started to be curious about Linux and asked me how they are compared to Windows lately. We've talked about how open source work, how safe Linux desktops are compared to Windows, and if money can be a motivator for people in the community. Talking about stuff like this has definitely made our relationship closer lately. So thank you, Linux. That is all for this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.